What's up, basketball fans? Welcome to the Warriors Report. It's time to have an honest conversation about Scotty Barnes. Now, obviously, understandably, he won the Rookie of the Year, so the expectations were set quite high for this season. But Scotty Barnes has definitely not lived up to expectations. But there's so much more to discuss. And no, if you're here to think that I'm going to throw Scotty Barnes under the bus, this is not one of those videos. So if you're ready to watch this video, guys, make sure to subscribe. Let's try to get to 4,000 subscribers. And with that being said, Let's get into today's video. Now, guys, I do want to apologize. I'm having some technical issues. It's not letting me put up pictures or edit text. So for today's video, the shout out does go out to Darshan Seva. So I'm sorry I'm not able to display it on here. But Darshan, thank you so much for supporting this channel with your likes and comments. It is very much appreciated. Now, let's have an honest conversation about Scotty Barnes. Now, there's a lot of chatter from a lot of Raptors fans this offseason stating that Pascal Siakam was holding Scotty Barnes back to development. Obviously, these play similar positions, and obviously some people were going off of recency bias, which is something I'm totally against, but we'll talk about recency bias in just one second. But a lot of fans were suggesting that the Raptors should move away and trade Pascal Siakam and Fred Van Vliet. Now, the issue was that Scotty Barnes wasn't ready to become the number one option that everyone was ready to throw him in. It's not because he's not talented enough. It's just that's not his style of play because he's someone who can distribute He's not there yet in terms of facilitating and shot creating for himself. A lot of fans felt that based off of his rookie season, we should move away from those two players and focus on the development of Scotty Barnes. Now, Scotty Barnes, who has been playing without Pascal Siakam, who's obviously been injured in the last five games. Let me tell you this. In the last five games, Scotty Barnes has shot 35% from the field. And yes, I'm well aware that he's playing injured. But before we use the injury excuse, hear me out. 35% not including that Dallas game in the last five games without Pascal Siakam. And before that Dallas game, the last eight games, Scotty Barnes had not shot under 50%. So what does that tell you about the importance of Pascal Siakam to this team? But if that wasn't bad enough, a lot of Raptors fans were stating, well, Fred Van Vliet isn't the guy. He doesn't fit into the 6869 mission. He's a ball hog. He doesn't, uh, he doesn't compliment Scotty's game. He's stopping him from developing. And while we saw Scotty Barnes play without Fred Van Lee for a game and a half, and although that sample size is still very small, I just don't think Scotty Barnes is there yet. Now, is that to say he's a terrible player and we should treat him? Absolutely not. What I have been emphasizing on this channel, guys, is stop with the recency bias. We've seen this time and time again, and this is unfortunately due to ESPN and their stupid hot takes, and I've been preaching this on this channel and unfortunately it's infiltrating the YouTube community as well where we're reacting to recency bias so much where Pascal Siakam is the next great thing and all of a sudden when you see him play in Tampa we should have treated him but I hate the fact that fans run off of recency bias because Scotty Barnes had a great rookie season there's no denying that but there's obviously if you watch the game closely you understand that he benefits from playing with guys like Pascal and Fred Van Vliet I mean think of take this for example before people say otherwise Think of someone like a Jordan Poole. Does he not play better with Klay Thompson, Draymond Green, Andrew Wiggins? And no, I'm not comparing Stephen Curry to any of the Raptors player, but does he not play better with those guys as opposed to just being him in the starting lineup without Steph Curry? Think of someone like a Tyrese Maxey. Does he not benefit by playing with Joel Embiid and James Harden? So where does this talk come from that the Raptors don't need Pascal and now it's recently, recently has been, the blame has been put on Fred Van Lee. I've been reading a lot of community posts and Bleacher's report on Reddit. Unfortunately, that blame shifted from Pascal to Fred Van Vliet is that he's ball hogging. He's taking too many shots. He's not giving um, Scotty Barnes enough shots. But we've seen it, guys. As great as Scotty Barnes is, we need patience. We need patience. And we also need to set realistic expectations, which is something I can't emphasize enough on. Because we've been here before as Raptors fans when Pascal Siakam had a great season during the championship run. There was a lot of talk about him being better than Jason Tatum. And I had just... I had facepalm because I couldn't believe some of the fans were actually stating that. It's quite obvious their talents are very different. Jason Tatum is miles ahead with all due respect to Pascal. And Pascal is my favorite player. But even some of the things we've seen over the years, OG Nanobi is the next Kawhi Leonard. I mean, we have to stop and set realistic expectations. Before we claim Scotty Barnes to become the next Giannis, I'm not saying he's not capable. He's a really strong, level-headed player with a high IQ we should let him focus on his development and let him grow at his own pace. That is all I'm going to say. This is not a Scotty Barnes slander video. And yes, he's playing injured. But the irony of that is what a lot of people were stating last year was Fred struggled in the second half of the season. And when fans responded that while he's playing injured, what people were quick to point out were that he's being selfish. Why is he not sitting out if he's injured? Yet here we are 
protecting Scotty Barnes. I love Scotty Barnes, but we got to hold him to the same standards. This is why I don't get a lot of criticism towards certain players, just picking and choosing what you want to, you know, kind of create narratives that that's what I'm trying to say is just create narratives that this player doesn't fit. He's playing selfish. He doesn't like this player. And we have to stop with this. Let's set realistic expectations and know the season is not over. Scotty Barnes will be great. Scotty Barnes needs patience from you guys. He needs development and it's going to take him several years before that. And I didn't want to jump on the hype train this offseason where you saw Scotty Barnes videos just kind of blew up from a lot of YouTubers. And I didn't want to jump on that because I know Scotty Barnes is going to take a while to develop. Is he a great player? Absolutely. Is he a high IQ player? Yes, he is. But have some patience with him. Giannis Anded Cooper, if we're comparing him to that, Giannis didn't become that in one, two, or three years. It took him several years. And I know where they started at. Scotty Barnes is more talented than when Giannis was when he first came into this league. But we need to lower our expectations, not only for Scotty Barnes, but just the Toronto Raptors. The Raptors will be fine, guys. They're playing with illnesses. They're playing with injury. And all this talk about Scotty Barnes not being happy, Thaddeus Young said yesterday in an interview that Scotty Barnes is putting a lot on his shoulders. So this is a struggle that a lot of players go through. When we talk about why they're struggling or what more be going on or if they're not mentally strong, he actually had said about Scotty Barnes that he's putting a lot of pressure on him. That is why he's struggling. And he is going to, the struggle is what creates the fruit in life. I mean, think about your own personal life. When you go through a struggle, you apply at 20 jobs, you apply at 30 jobs, whatever the case was, and then you finally get that one job. Is that not more rewarding than applying for one job and getting that job right away? That's the struggle of life. That's the struggle of NBA players. It's no different from them. They're human beings. They're going to go through that struggle. We saw with Pascal Siakam when recency bias told you guys that he was a terrible player. He's not even fit to be a number two option. We're wasting $35 million on him. Yet look what he's doing this season. We need to be patient and let players go through the struggle. And same thing with Fred Van Vliet. Again, I'm here to defend every Raptors player is we've been hearing a lot of, well, Fred is not that guy. He's not a passer. Think about Kyle Lowry. And no, I'm not comparing the two players. But think about Kyle Lowry at age 28 and compare him at 32. Now, he didn't get significantly better. And I'm not saying Fred Van Lee is all of a sudden going to be a pass first point guard. But in terms of evolving your game, just little high IQ plays, knowing when to take the shots. That's, I mean, we've criticized Fred so much recently for slowing the ball down, no ball movement. But think about Kyle Lowry. How did our Raptors fan base survive this man right here and his transition threes? He used to bring the ball up. Forget passing it. He would shoot the three right away. For a lot of people who've been watching Raptors for a while, you know how it is. This man literally, <laughs> Coach Casey was frustrated with him because he would literally bring the ball up and he'd be ready to shoot that three-pointer right away. So all I preach is patience with a lot of players. I'm not saying we can't criticize them. Criticism is for, except for the fact when you start making up stories about guys like Pascal holding Scotty back, Fred holding Scotty back, Fred being selfish. They don't fit the team. They're not the right guys. So we need to slow down, take a deep breath. The Raptors will be fine. Scotty Barnes will be fine. It's two games where the Raptors have lost. And again, it's back-to-back -back games. Scotty is injured. Give him that. But also acknowledge that he benefits by playing with Pascal Siakam and Fred Van Vliet. Pascal Siakam draws a lot of attention on the defense, on the offensive side. So when he has the ball, there's two defenders right there. It opens up more looks for other guys like Fred, like Scotty, like OG. So we need to stop this narrative that Pascal and Fred are holding Scotty back. No one's holding no one back. They're going to learn to play with each other. It's going to take time. It's still a very long season. And in the famous words of Dwayne Casey, it's a marathon, not a sprint. So make sure to leave your thoughts in the comment section below, guys. Again, I do apologize. I don't have a trivia question because I'm having some technical issues. It won't let me display images or any text while I make these videos. So make sure to leave your comments down below. And that will be it for today's video, guys. And make sure to subscribe as well. Let's try to get to 4,000 subscribers. But let me know your thoughts down below. That will be it for today's video, guys. So thank you so much for watching this video. And I hope you guys have yourselves a great day.